cameras live here, so you give me a moment. Okay, we are live on YouTube. We're getting live on Facebook right now. Okay, it looks like we're pretty good here. Okay, greetings. There we go. I think we are now live on both Facebook and now YouTube. There we go. Okay, we are set. Excellent. Okay, greetings, everybody, and uh, let me get situated here. <laughs> okay, there it is. YouTube has now announced this live. So it's uh, kind of nice of that. So greetings, everybody. My name is Michael Matsuda. I'm president and founder of the Martial Arts History Museum. Terry Lee Lopez. Thank you for watching, Terry. Very kind of you. I appreciate that very much. Uh, we try to do a little broadcast like here, uh, tell you what's all going on, what's happening, what's new. Every uh, couple of days, we try to do it, uh, uh, especially when the museum's open, I try to do it every other day or uh, every couple of days or something like that. Danny Lopez, too. Terry Lee Lopez and Danny Lopez. Thank you for watching uh, the great Danny Lopez. You know, we honor Danny here. Remember, we had Danny Lopez Day. Recall that, Danny? Wasn't that a great day? You know, doing the the honor days uh, is a lot of fun here at the museum. A lot of fun. I really enjoy it. I really miss them galore. We used to do two honor days uh, a month, and we'd honor people. And in case you didn't know, we do two honor days a month, and we set up a time to dedicate about two hours to honor somebody in the martial arts. And uh, what we do is we do uh, a video. I, I ask them to send me their pictures, and we do two videos of them. And then I ask them to send me a little bit about them, and I write a whole biography. I write the whole thing, a whole biography, and then I give them some questions, tell them about their, their childhood, what they like, what they dislike, and different things like that when they grew up. And uh, the, so I put together a whole program, and uh, everybody uh, uh, has a great time, and we have a day dedicated, two hours dedicated to that. We give them a nice certificate, and it's a nice way to say thank you to somebody while they're still here. You know, it's like a memorial, but a fun memorial in a way to say thank you for what you've done in my life. And while you're still here, I can reach out and say thank you. So that's what it's about. Okay, so everybody who is watching, Richard Bash, thank you for watching. So all you guys, Terry Lee, Danny, Richard, if you guys don't mind, if you don't mind, and anybody who's watching me on Facebook, if you don't mind, if you can hop on over to YouTube and go to the Martial Arts History Museum's YouTube channel. If you go on that channel, and right there on the museum's channel, I will be live just like you see it right now. So I'm doing broadcasts on both channels, but if you sign up on YouTube and watch me from YouTube, I get credit, viewing credit on there. Because we need, I will talk about that in just a little bit. But we get viewing credit on there. And uh, if you don't mind doing that, That'll be fantastic. If you can't, that's okay. But if you can, hop on over to YouTube, and we're going to get that viewing credit, and that will really help us a lot. Believe me, it really helps. Every time somebody watches on YouTube, uh, it, it, it increases. So let's say uh, 10 people are watching, and I'm on YouTube for 10 minutes. They add 10 minutes per person watching. So that's a lot of minutes. That's 110 minutes of watching. They're just calculated that way, which is great. Okay, so if you don't mind shipping, uh, shifting over to YouTube, that'll be fantastic. Um, Danny Lopez says it rained like crazy that day, but still had a good turnout. Yes, thank you, Troy, for doing that. Switching over, I appreciate that. Oh, look at Mario's calling. Mario Prado, hold on, guys. Hey, Mario, I'm going to call you back because I'm live on TV right now, <laughs> on YouTube TV. So I will call you back. Sounds good. Okay, we'll call Mario back. Uh, so Mario Prado from Black Bob Magazine. Uh, so anyway, uh, thank you, Danny and Richard and all you guys. If you can switch over to that, that'll be fantastic. Okay. So let's see. People on uh, YouTube are uh, Troy Ransom. Thank you, Troy. And uh, uh, thank you for watching uh, very much. Uh, let's see. Uh, Graham's Fight Corner. Thank you. Good. Again, for Graham, thank you for all these people for coming back. I really appreciate that. It's like a little family reunion. It's kind of cool. A uh, Campo Joe, Joe Robello, thank you for watching here on YouTube. Watch you. There you go. Adding points and hours. Stuntman92392. Is this it? This is it. That's correct. That's correct, my friend. You are live with us. We appreciate that very much. I think that's Danny Lopez right there. And then Apache Nice Robert Redfeather, thank you for watching. So, anyway, uh, thank you. Yes. Got it. Perfect. Perfect. It delayed it. It all started over. Okay, so you're good. You're good. Everybody's good now on YouTube. 
Thank you guys very much. Excellent. Excellent. They were giving me a thumbs up there. So thank you very much. Anyway, uh, so um, the, the, the honor days were a lot of fun to do. Um, it was a great time. Mario's calling again. What is it? Mario, I just talked to you. Mario, I'm live on broadcast right now. I'll call you right after. Say hi to everybody. <laughs> Mario Prado, Black Belt Magazine. Okay, talk to you later. Bye. That's Mario. Good friend, Mario. Mario Prado is the cover photographer for Black Belt Magazine. Mario and I had known each other since college days when we used to work back on He worked on the magazine. I worked on the newspaper for college. But Mario and I go way back. So, uh, yeah, uh, look at Danny Lopez says, says hello to Mario. Anyway, uh, so uh, let me just move this here. There we go. Okay, so I'm all set on this area. There we go. Uh, okay, uh, great. Uh, Robert, Robert McCall is watching. Thank you very much again. Always a pleasure, my friends. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it for watching very much. Thomas, Thomas, thank you for watching. Thomas Altum, thank you very much. Very cool of you guys to, to be watching. I appreciate that very much. So, again, uh, anybody who is on uh, on uh, Facebook, if you're watching, if you can, if you can, uh, go on to the Martial Arts History Museum's YouTube channel and watch us from there, and that will be fantastic. We're going to get viewing hours. So I appreciate that. But anyway, the the honor days were a great time. I really miss doing them. We had a lot of fun saying, you know, having a great time remembering everybody's past and people come. People came from all over just to be there. Um, oh, Chi Wan Gong. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Michael. It's me, Douglas Wong. Oh, Doug, the great Douglas Wong is watching. They, ladies and gentlemen, please say hi to one of the, the biggest pioneers in the martial arts. Sifu Douglas Wong. Thank you very much. Very much. Uh, Robert says, uh, oh, you're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. But anyway, the, the days that we honor people was a lot of fun. We've honored uh, Sifu Doug Wong many times and many people. And people will fly in from all over the place just to be there. And I think it's important to have those days. So uh, the honor days were just a blast to have at the museum. I, they were so much work to do because I had to do a biography. I had to write biographies. I had to do the video. And we didn't charge them at all. We didn't charge all free of charge. And uh, we just heard people coming in that's paid for everything. And uh, it was just a lot of fun to do. We did very well money-wise for the museum. So those were a great time. I hope we can get back to the point so we can do those honor days again. But they were a lot of fun to do. So I really, really miss them. But uh, again, it was, it was just, just a fantastic time. Okay, so very good. So what else is coming up? Um, in regard to YouTube, here's where we're at. Here's our stats, guys. I know you're anxious for our stats. Here it is. We have a uh, little over 1,100, I think, 20 subscribers, which is fantastic. It re we require 1,000 subscribers, the first part, to get monetized. So we're good on there. Thank you, everybody, for subscribing. That's very kind of you. And then now we need 4,000 viewing hours. Currently, we are at 3,337 viewing hours. We are 600 and like 60 something viewing hours to go. So we are almost there. We are almost there. Yes, Robert says we are rocking it. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We can do it. I think we can do it in another week and a half. We will get those needed 600 viewing hours or so left, and, and then we can be uh, 4,000 viewing hours, 1,000 subscribers. That's what's required. We'll hit that, and then YouTube will send us an email, and they'll say, okay, we're going to review your, your YouTube channel, and if we like it, we're going to give you the thumbs up, and we're going to start putting commercials on our YouTube channel, and then we'll get some money to help the museum. So that's going to be fantastic. So thank you, everybody, for coming on and, and watching these channels galore. It has made a difference, a huge difference. You can see that every day. So thank you, for everybody, for doing that. Very nice of you. Very nice. Uh, Thomas Allen says, select, play, all, and go to bed. I do. Thank you, Thomas, for doing that. Thank you, Troy. Uh, thank you, everybody. Robert, everybody, thank you, Richard, Richard Bash, thank you for coming on. Sensei Emmett, how are you doing, my friend? How are you doing, Sensei Emmett? Troy Ransom just came on board. How are you doing, Douglas Wong? Have a, one, have a wonderful weekend. Uh, just a reminder, everybody, Gong Hei Fa Choi, it is Chinese New Year's. Yes, it is Chinese New Year. What, what year is it? Uh, Sifu Douglas Wong, you would know this right away. 
what is the year, uh, you know, like the year of the rat, year of the boar, year of the different things. What year is it? Oh, year of the ox. There we go. Year of the ox. Excellent. I don't know the, uh, you know, each one has the description of what it is, but it's year of the ox. So uh, happy new year to everybody. I miss going. I didn't go to Chinatown very much. We had the Chinese New Year's, but now they uh, obviously they're not going to have the parade. Uh, I don't think so. But anyway, uh, it, it's uh, enjoy Chinese New Year's today. I don't know what year it is, but uh, someone can enlighten me. That would be fantastic. But uh, any, anyway, uh, enjoy Chinese New Year. Um, uh, Robert says his is year of the rat. Uh, mine is year of the boar. <laughs> Exciting year, year of the boar. I, it would nice to be year of the monkey, of course, but it's year of the boar. So anyway, but uh, have some Chinese food today. That'd be fantastic. Celebrate Chinese New Year. You know, as you know, the greatest, uh, look at Grams this year of the monkey. There you go. You know, the, of course, you know, the greatest Chinese food of all time, Panda Express. There you go, Panda Express. <laughs> anyway, um, Kepo Joe says, year of the white meadow ox, the completion of the 60-year cycle, which coincides with my lifespan. There you go. There you go. You're a young man, 60 years old. Young man there, Kempo Joe. So very good. I remember when I was 60. <laughs> Stenman says, uh, this is the year of the ox. Yes, there you go, guys. There you go. So have a fun time. Have a wonderful, happy new year, Chinese New Year. So uh, let's see what else is coming up. Okay, we have right now, okay, right now, it, just as a prototype, okay, just as a prototype, uh, we have our new shot our new uh page that's online it is called marshall shop so m-a-r-t-i-a-l s-h-o-p dot com okay that is our brand new site we just released now it's still in the development stages it's not done it's not done but you can take a sneak peek at it if you want it's called marshallshop.com and that is where we're going to have our expert class, okay? And these are people who are uh, different icons of the martial arts, and uh, it's going to do two things. They're going to do their favorite techniques. Some of their techniques are going to be on there for all of you to enjoy. So you're having Benny Yukides talk about his three favorite techniques, and Don the Dragon Wilson talk about his three, three and uh, Michelle Mano, and Graciela Casillas, and many different people are going to be sharing their three favorite techniques that they do in the martial arts. Okay, that's the first part. So it's going to be an ongoing series of classes for all of you to enjoy. And we're trying to get the Hall of Famers on there first. And uh, they're going to talk about, you know, the different things, different techniques, different things they use. And it'd be kind of neat to hear them saying, you know, in present time uh, of all the things they use. So that's going to be pretty inspirational to actually see Benny Ukita is teaching a class while they're still with us. So that's going to be pretty exciting. So that's going to be coming up. We're going to, we're, we're trying to get it at the end of February. We're not sure because we're still waiting. More videos are coming now. People are sending videos. So I'm trying to get it out as soon as we can. If we get at least six of them on there, I will go ahead and release it for everybody to watch. But uh, it's going to be free of charge. It's going to be free of charge. We're not charging any, any amount for classes. What we're doing is we're hooking each of the videos up to YouTube. And hence, the viewing hours will now go to YouTube. You guys know what I mean? So that's how we're going to get the, the money from the commercials by the viewing hours. So the more we have for viewing, and we'll put it on that site called marshallshop.com. Now, because it'll be hooked up to YouTube, it'll also be on YouTube. So you can go to either site, the YouTube channel, or to the marshallshop.com and you can access the videos there all free of charge for everybody to enjoy so it, it's going to be real nice it's going to be a lot of fun a lot of people great people are giving up their time i want to say thank you to all those people who give them their time without charging us at all to help us out and that's very kind of them people help in any way they can and i appreciate that very much like you guys i appreciate you guys so much for watching uh the, this right now this youtube this is just helping us galore right now there are 13 people watching and that is fantastic when this is over youtube will you know each 13 people add up each of those so that's a pretty big chunk 
of viewing time. So uh, that's on marshallshop.com. Now, if you go to Marshall Shop, you, there's a second selection in there. There's three selections. Three, sorry. There we go, three. Three selections on there, like this. This I couldn't do. This was this I could do easily. I could do that when it came out in Star Trek. You know, other people were kind of go like this. I was pretty good at that. So anyway, nothing to do with what we're talking about. So anyway, so <laughs> the second thing on Marshall Shop is called Words of Wisdom. Now, what I wanted for that is we did a lot of great interviews, fantastic interviews for our biography. And I thought there were some great clips from some of those in the biography and some are not in there and different places that we did, different, different shootings. And people talk about, you know, things that encourage them or uh, right now uh, what to do about bullying and different, different topics, topics, you know, about what inspired them or what kept them going. Uh, Don Wilson did a wonderful talk about uh, uh, moving forward and, 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 you know, uh, learning by his mistakes and, uh, you know, growing from them. So it was a great thing that they were talking about. And I thought it'd be nice to have a little section called Words of Wisdom that these guys can, you know, it doesn't have to be long, but a little bit about uh, things that inspire them or things that people have questions about, you know, and it'd be kind of cool to have that on there. And I thought that'd be a nice place to put it on there. Thank you, Robert, for saying that. Uh, Don is awesome. Don the Dragon is. He's a great guy. And so uh, that's what's going to be on there. It's called Words of Wisdom. And it's going to be, I'm going to put the topic on there. And you can see it right now if you click on it. I, I have only two on there right now, but they're not active yet. Again, none of this is active yet. And I put it on there so you can see it on marshallshop.com, uh, your expert class, and then Words of Wisdom. So we're, we're starting to, to put the template up and getting things ready to go. Uh, and then we'll hit the live button when it's all done. And then the last area is the shopping cart, Marshall, the, uh, the museum store, museum store. Now, as I told you before, you guys all know, I've been trying to get a bunch of stuff ready and I got a bunch of hats here all ready to go. And I, I think I'm going to go with Etsy, Etsy.com and connect that with the, uh, the museum store because they have a whole page dedicated on that. And it's pretty cool. And uh, they do all this taxes and all that stuff for you. So I may go with them. So I'm going to, once I hit the 4,000 viewing hours, I'm going to now focus on getting that shopping cart uh, ready to go. So we're going to have some things that you can buy and that'll be pretty exciting. So caps and a bunch of other stuff that'll be there. And that'll be our new Marshall store, our museum store. So that'd be pretty exciting. Uh, Richard Bass says it links to your home site right now. Uh, we don't right now, right now, Richard, I have not linked it yet. Not yet. I'm still working on the page. I didn't want to put the link on there until I had it all done. So I will be putting it on though. I will be putting on, even though we're almost done, not quite done, I'm going to go ahead and put it on there. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to link it up to the museum's uh, website. Okay. Uh, Gramps has a question. Mr. Bash, can you link it? I get three like different ones. I'm not sure what that means. But uh, Graham says, oh, okay. Oh, you guys talking to each other. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, okay. Uh, I think that's Douglas Wong. There you go. Thank you, sir. Oh, he's indicating the years. Thank you very much. And I need a trolley dash when the car is up. Everybody's talking to each other. Okay, fantastic. I'm glad they are. Guys, if they come on here, please talk to each other, guys. That's how, how we connect. And it's really great to have Sifu Douglas Wong watching. Uh, again, Seafood Douglas, I, you know, Seafood Douglas was the first person I went to to talk about the museum. Back in 1988, when I closed, I sold the magazine. Uh, he was the first person I talked to. So Doug and I, uh, Seafood Doug and I talked about how the museum would be great and it'd be a wonderful thing to pursue. And I took it from there. But he was my the first person I wanted to go to to discuss the museum. And uh, thank you, Sifu Douglas Wong, for being there for me. I appreciate it very much. They lent us everything you name in the kitchen sink to take it on tour. So many, many thanks to Sifu Douglas Wong. So thank you, sir. Always being there for the museum. Very kind of you. I, I'm glad to know Sifu Douglas for many, many years. You know, uh, Sifu Douglas, um, in case you didn't know, I just found this out. Okay, I just found this out. I told a few people about this already. And you probably heard about this already. 
back when in uh, 1967, I believe, 1967, uh, I was a little kid, and I used to go to uh, my uh, cousin's house, Cousin Emily. And I went to her house. My mom would go there and visit her. They were very close. And Cousin Emily used to rent out. Uh, she had a, a home in North Hollywood. And she used to rent out. Uh, they were set up for, like, uh, different apartment rooms. That's right. So she'd rent out different apartment rooms to different people, mostly college students. But a lot of people can stay there, you know. So one of the person that was staying there was named Juan, okay, J-U-A-N, Juan, okay. And Juan, I used to, you know, I was a little kid, and I used to venture all over the place. And uh, sure enough, I befriended him, okay, befriended Juan. And, and Juan was learning Kung Fu. And he was teaching me Kung Fu right there at my cousin's house. So here I am at seven. I, I completely forgot this. Douglas Wong, I mean, uh, Carl Totten, Super Carl Totten reminded me about this. And he was teaching me Kung Fu. And I said, you know, I don't know what style it was. I had no idea what style it was. And I, I completely forgot about that. Because I tell everybody I started in Judo in 1968. But I completely forgot that I used to study Kung Fu in 1967. I completely, I don't know why I didn't remember. But that's right. He was teaching me movements. And, and and I said, you know, I don't know what style it was. Well, Carl Totten, Sifu Totten says, oh, wait a minute. I have pictures, you know, of different people from Kwai Wong's class, you know. And sure enough, there's a picture of Juan in our Kwai Wong's class. I'm pretty sure that's him. And I said, my God, he was a student of Sifu Kwai Wong. So I was actually learning you know, the five animal system from one of our Kwai Wong students. Isn't that funny? I did not realize it. I didn't realize it. And there it was, you know, excuse me, guys. Uh, my throat's getting a little dry. I need a little water here, a little Coke Zero. So lo and behold, I actually started in the Silum system back in the early days and didn't even know it. Uh, trained with um, Juan from our Kwai Wong's class in 1967. I didn't even know. Didn't even know. But there's a little cool history. Isn't that neat? So anyway, Richard Bash, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate that very much. So uh, anyway, um, that's our, our new program, MarshallShop.com. I hope you watch it and enjoy it. Uh, we're going to, again, everything's going to be free on there. And we're going to do a lot of great stuff on there. And it's just another branch out for the museum for people to have a lot of fun with and, and get some great techniques from, you know, some, some great guys on there. And I am even coming out of retirement. I'm not retirement, really. But I'm actually going to do a video myself from Monkey Kung Fu showing my three favorite techniques as well. So, yes, I'm, I'm going to put the uniform back on and, uh, and uh, do a little Monkey Kung Fu. And you guys can enjoy that as well. So... There you go. There you go. So that's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Apache yeah, Nice is cool. Yes. Uh, Robert Redfeather is also doing a video for us. He did one already. Thank you, sir. Uh, did you see the page, Robert? It's already up. MarshallShop.com. It's coming out pretty cool. And, uh, you know, it's going to look nice. It's going to look nice when we're all done. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, yesterday, we had a whole film crew here. Uh, they were shooting here from a little documentary about myths, myths and misconceptions about the martial arts. And that was pretty fun to do. You know, I enjoyed that. People talking about their hands registered by the police and all that stuff like that. Fun stuff like that. And uh, and those remember those ads. If you're as old as dust as I am, if you're as old as dust as I am, you remember the ads in the back of the comic books. That had these guys doing, you know, tearing someone's heart out of there with, you know, with their bare hands or all this stuff like that in the back of the comic books. So if you're old as dust as as, as me and Sifu Douglas Wong, <laughs> you remember those ads. So anyway, we talked about those. And I think it will be a nice show later on to do a little bit about that later on, about some of the unique things that the, the martial arts from the early days. Uh, what else is coming up? I am almost done with my personal biography. 
Yes, my personal biography. I shot this about two years or so ago. Uh, probably 10 pounds thinner. <laughs> anyway, so so I look a little different. And uh, so I shot that back then. And, uh, you know, I just put it off. I didn't, I, I would rather concentrate on everybody else than myself. But, you know, as, as I'm slowly, I give a little time, five minutes, 10 minutes here and there, every so many days. And sure enough, I'm just about done with uh, my own personal biography. So I'll be releasing that. I was hoping to release it uh, coming up uh, this this week coming up, but um, I've just got too many things going on. So it'll probably be the next week I'll release it out. I hope you guys enjoy it. You know, it's not in depth about everything, but it's all about the museum. It's all about the museum, a little bit about me, you know, and growing up and all that, like I do with the other videos. That's in there as well. And I hope you guys enjoy it. So it came out pretty good, came out pretty good so far. And uh, But I want to put a, not, a lot more pictures on that, make it a little more exciting and all that. So that's coming out pretty good. Uh, coming out also, uh, I think on Monday, on Monday is, uh, going to be the release of, uh, Leo Fong, Leo Fong's, uh, biography. We're going to release that on Monday. As you know, Leo Fong, one of the uh, close friends of Bruce Lee, they used to hang out, uh, all the time, every Friday night, uh, Leo would tell me and they would hang out together and, um, you know, have a lot of fun together. And um, he was a good personal friend of Bruce Lee. And, I, and we did a wonderful, wonderful biography on Leo Fong. So we're going to release that probably Monday. Uh, uh, let's see, Tuesday. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're going to be releasing that on Tuesday. And I'm going to contact Leo and see if we could either connect or have him come online or something like that. We'll figure it out uh, for Leo Fong. So that that'll be pretty exciting. So that'll be probably on Tuesday. I'll let you know the date. I'm going to contact Leo and and get that set up. That should be pretty exciting. Uh, let's say Robert says, cool stuff in the pipeline. You know, <laughs> it's a museum. We're never nonstop here. We're always working hard to get everything moving, you know. Uh, it, it, two nights ago, we were here cleaning up this place. It took like four hours to clean up the museum because we had the film crew coming, coming. So we really cleaned this place. So it looks spick and span now here at the museum. But, um, yeah, we're always got stuff moving, going for the museum. Oh, I also have this, guys, here. Let me get this for you. Uh, let's see where it's at. Oh, it is right. Ah, here it is. Here it is. Okay. Here we go. Here we go, guys. Okay, let me get this. Okay, you're going to be excited about this. This is pretty cool. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Look what I have here. You're going to be pretty excited about this. This is a signed, signed autograph cover from Graciela Casillas. She just signed this for us, and we're going to put that on auction in, in a, maybe later today. We're going to put it up for auction, okay? So in case you guys didn't know, in case you knew on here, uh, we are trying to get uh, the magazine signed. Uh, by the artist on the cover. And then we auction it off here in the museum. We put it out there and, and people put a bid on here on Facebook. Uh, we'll put it on Facebook. And I'll, I'll, I'll put it on Facebook for everybody to know. But we put a bid on here and people can bid on it. And then we go ahead and send it to them. And the bid is a donation to the museum. So it's a tax deductible donation. And you get the cover signed by Graciela Casillas. How cool is that? So that's what we did. We have several covers made, you know, not made, but we have several covers that we have. And then uh, we get, uh, we find the nicest one and then we auction it off for people to enjoy and purchase that. So that's what we've done. We got a great cover here of Graciela Casillas. We're going to put up for auction very soon, probably later today. We'll have that up for auction. And uh, let's see if I have anybody else right now available. I have Benny Ukitas here. But he hasn't signed it. Matter of fact, I'm going to be seeing Benny probably next week and have him sign it. And then we have, uh, yeah, we got a couple here. And, oh, this is going to be a nice one right here. This is uh, Chuck Liddell. Okay, Chuck Liddell. I'm going to be seeing Chuck this week. So I'm going to see if he can sign this for me. And that will be a nice one to uh, auction off too. So uh, that so right now we're able to connect with a few people and uh, have them sign 
uh, get them to sign the covers. And uh, that'll be pretty exciting, you know, to have an auction off again. Again, we did this earlier and uh, we're going to start again now that we have time, uh, that we're able to, that, that, that we can have a little more freedom during the COVID and uh, we're going to get a few of these signed. So it's kind of neat. It's, an, it's a great thing to have and uh, to sign the covers. And uh, it's pretty exciting to have it. It really is to have someone signed it. You know, dummy me, <laughs> always dummy me. I always forget to do this when people are, are still here and like Bill Yosaki and Richard Busio, I didn't even have it done and I kick myself for, for not doing that. But now I'm, I'm, I'm making up for that and getting people to sign it. So that's what I'm doing, getting people to sign the cover. So that's what this is all about. Uh, I'm gonna drop a few over to Sifu Douglas Wong and he doesn't mind signing his and a few others and uh, that'd be fantastic. So we're gonna set that up. We're going to put that on auction very soon, maybe later today. I'm not sure. And we're going to put it out there. And then people put their bids on Facebook. And then uh, we let it up stay up there for like a week or so. And then the one with the highest bid, uh, we, we ship it off to them. Uh, we don't charge for the shipping. We ship it off to them. And uh, they get a nice uh, autograph cover to put on their wall. How cool is that? How cool is that? So uh, anyway, that's kind of exciting. We're ready to. We did this before, before covid and then COVID kind of stopped us from, from uh, doing that. But now we're restarting it again. And uh, that's going to be pretty good with the new uh, cover of Graciela Casillas to launch this off. As you know, Graciela Casillas, one of the premier kickboxing champions of all time. And, you know, when women's kickboxing started, it was Lily Rodriguez. Lily Rodriguez, her sister, Benny Uquitas, she married uh, Blinky Rodriguez. And she was the one. She was the main person that really launched uh, women's kickboxing. It was Lily that was the pioneer. If you want to say the mother of kickboxing, that was her. That was her. And then she got into boxing as well. She became a huge pioneer in boxing. But she is the one that launched it all. And then Graciela came on board. Casillas and more other people came on board after that. But Lily Rodriguez was just the person uh, to launch everything. So we're very, very thankful for Lily for doing that. Um, I am very honored to have known Lily since I was really young. Lily used to come over to our house all the time to get her, her dresses hemmed. You guys heard that before. And she would come over. So it was always nice to look, to, to be, you know, part of that family for, for many years. So anyway, so anyway, that was pretty fun. Okay. Uh, what else is coming up? I have, uh, still working on my Tiki. I got a couple of people doing voices for me. I'm not, uh, I I'm just going through a whole bunch and see which one I like, you know, uh, it's got to fit it. It's got to feel, it got to have that right feeling. You know what I mean? The right feeling for the sound of the Tiki. So everybody's been so kind enough to do a bunch of videos. Thank you, America, Sambi Thomas. Thank you, David Ortiz. Thank you a few other people that did it. And uh, we're just going through a bunch of them and see which one we like best. And what fits it, and then we're going to launch the new animatronic for the talking tiki, and that's that's going to be pretty exciting. So th that's kind of neat. I talked to the people from Comic Con yesterday, and they yes, they confirmed with me a uh, Comic Con is canceled for this year. So Comic Con uh, will not be this year in San Diego. That's two years in a row. That's pretty sad. They do really well out there, but uh, that's two years in a row. I remember <laughs> one time I was at a council meeting and they were saying, okay, what is your outlook for Dragon Fest? You know, your convention, what's your outlook, you know, for you? I said, we're the next Comic-Con. That's what we're going to be. The next Comic-Con. They said, okay, <laughs> that's it. That's what we're going to be. The next Comic-Con one day, we will be the next Comic-Con. In regard to Dragon Fest, um, Yes, uh, so far, Dragon Fest is still scheduled for August 21st. We are going to wait until May to start really pushing it. Uh, why? Because we don't know on the COVID vaccine yet. We don't know what's up on that, you know. And also, the place that we're going to have it, the, the uh, Pickwick Gardens Convention Center, we're not sure if they're still going to be there. So we'll see what happens in May. And we'll go from there. So we're not going to push it. We're, we'll talk about it. We're not going to make any tickets available. We're just going to say it's August 21st. And we're just going to contact a few people and, uh, you know, uh, go from there and see what happens. We're just going to see what happens. But we're going to wait till May. So anyway, 
awesome. that, that's up on Dragon Fest. Uh, we'll, we're going to try to throw the anniversary of Big Trouble in Little China. Thank you. Someone provided, I think it was uh, uh, Joe Ravello, and those guys provided me with some great information uh, for, for that. Thank you very much, everybody, for providing all that and great information, great contacts of stars from Big Trouble in Little China to appear at Dragon Fest. But we'll see what happens in May. That's, you know, because of uh, the COVID stuff. And all that. So anyway, uh, what else is coming up? Um, I think that's a lot. <laughs> I think that's a lot. Um, I will finish my biography hopefully very soon. Again, I'm working on it like crazy. It's almost done. But I want to add a few more pictures and a few more stuff to it. But again, I'm looking forward for Leo Fong's biography. That's going to be pretty exciting. You're going to enjoy that. You're going to enjoy that quite a bit. A bit. Okay, uh, Sensei Emmett has a question. You should do a short intro to Monkey Series on YouTube. Um, a short intro. I did a, a nice intro, I think, for the, uh, the whole DVD series for Monkey Kung Fu. I got a little intro on there, and I think that, uh, the 17 DVDs I have on there online. So that, that's, that's pretty fun. So people could enjoy it there. Um, but uh, for the... Uh, the uh, the class I think you're talking about expert class. No, it's just going to be the three techniques. Those are just the three techniques that I enjoy most. Uh, you can see you can see me in the DVDs. I look better there <laughs> in the DVDs. They're a couple years old, but that's okay. You can, you got all that's young me, young me in the DVDs. Not that young, but young me in the DVDs. Uh, going back there. It was a pleasure to do monkey kung fu. It was an interesting art form, extremely difficult to learn. And I mean extremely difficult to learn, uh, but uh, it's a unique art form. Anybody can learn it. They can if they really try. So uh, I'm glad to save the history uh, onto 17 DVD. So if you like Monkey Kung Fu, I put everything in there. So hopefully you guys enjoy it as well. Okay, anybody have any questions for me now? Uh, then now that I talked about a bunch of stuff, uh, some stuff you've already heard already, but again, it's nice to connect with everybody and keep you all updated what's going on right on. Okay, uh, Robert has a question. How's the museum tour coming along for the online video? Excellent question. Uh, we are going to do, just like I'm broadcasting right here, we are going to do a live broadcast of a tour of the museum. So we are scheduling that coming up. Uh, I need to get my guy, Mario Prado, to uh, shoot it for me. So he's going to have to have the camera live. And then he's going to have to follow me around with that. So I'm going to schedule that in a couple weeks. Uh, I'll give an announcement, but it'll probably be probably less than a month away. It'll probably be on a Monday because um, uh, Mario's off on Monday. <laughs> so I'll probably get Mario over here, and then we'll shoot a, uh, a whole walkthrough of the museum, uh, give you a, a chance to do a Q&A. It takes about an hour to go through the whole museum with all the video and all the stuff. We're not going to uh, – I guess we can leave the video on, but it will be kind of annoying me talking. We'll see. We'll see when we get there. But anyway, uh, yeah, thank you for mentioning that, Robert. Uh, yeah, we're going to do a live tour uh, of the whole museum, and I'm going to talk about different items in the museum. And, uh, you know, uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. It'll be a lot of fun. I know people can't make it here from all over the world. I understand that. So this would be a nice way for people to view the museum and ask some questions. There's always questions. You know, I, I do my best to do the history. And uh, there's always some great questions out there. And uh, I, uh, thankfully, I remember them. I remember them. <laughs> if you're you know, old like me and Sifu Douglas Wong, we were there. <laughs> We were there for part of it. Okay, another question here. It says, uh, cool afternoon, be best for me. I work till 10 p.m., which is 2 p.m. your time. Excellent. And then uh, Sensei Emmett says, or start a Patreon teaching monkey kung fu and raise money for the museum. I did uh, try it. I did try the Patreon. Uh, it didn't, you know, uh, martial arts is a such a niche community. You know, it's just kind of us. It's a huge community, but it's a small community as well. And uh, some things people sign up for, for for classes all the time. And if you do like uh, some, a few martial artists I know uh, do a lot of classes on Patreon. They, they do. Not too many, but a few do. And a few are very successful at it. 
But monkey kung fu is a very unique style of martial art, and it's not a big audience. You know what I mean? Not a lot of people are rushing, rushing out there to learn monkey kung fu. And and we tried it, and uh, it didn't work. We tried to put it on Patreon for a short time, and couldn't get anybody on it. And we just ended it. We just ended it. It it just never worked. So putting martial arts in uh, on Patreon is a little hard. We do have a Patreon for the museum here, and we only have a handful of people on there, a handful of people. I want to say thank you to all those, Denny Lopez, so many of the people on there. Thank you, everybody, for being on there and helping us out. We appreciate that very much. And uh, just Patreon doesn't work for uh, Monkey Kung Fu. It just doesn't work. And um, I tried it, tried it, but, you know, it, some things just don't work. Some things... We do our best to try something out. We really do. We give it a, amount, a good amount of time, you know, and see if it's going to work. If it don't work, it just doesn't work, you know. We tried the telethon. If, in case you didn't know, we had a 24-hour telethon. It was actually a weekend telethon to raise money, and we didn't raise that much money at all. We had people here galore, you know, like they have telethons live on YouTube, live on Facebook. And we just couldn't get people watching. You know what I mean? And nobody was hardly donating. So we tried to do the telethons for two years in a row. And it just didn't really work out to what we liked. So we just stopped doing it. It was a lot of fun to do, but we didn't raise much money at all. And it was so much work. My God. And it just wasn't worth it. It just wasn't worth it in the long run. Okay, a few more questions here. Uh, Sensei Amit says, I love to get the DVDs, but the shipping is so expensive to Ireland. I'd love to learn monkey kung fu. Uh, yeah, I know. Shipping everywhere is just so expensive. You know, it's really expensive. And I wish I could, uh, we had monkey kung fu online in itself as a class. And, uh, you know, it just didn't work out. Nobody was coming to it. It wasn't worth the cost of keeping it online. It just wasn't worth it. We just, people were watching it. So we just stopped doing it. We had it both on, on Patreon and we had it also as a regular class online, you could pay and, and watch it. Just We just couldn't, you know, just not enough people watching it to keep it up. Just didn't pay for itself. So, you know, we just stopped doing it. Monkey Kung Fu is a unique art. and just not a lot of people want to do it. So it's just you only have a small amount. So you don't have a big audience. So it just, just doesn't work. Robert says, has a question. I start Tai Chi 24. It's an online class twice a week. You know, Tai Chi is an excellent art form uh, that you can learn online it is probably the biggest martial art shall we say uh taught everywhere because people study tai chi like crazy uh, and uh you know that would do well online matter of fact uh sifu doug's wife does a wonderful uh dvd oh i don't have it up here and uh, we have a couple of dvds i think i have it right here hold on guys i'll look for it right here i think it's right here yeah here it is matter of fact uh okay yeah, here it is. Okay. That might be Art Camacho. Art's going to stop by in a little bit today. So he might, he might say hello to them. Uh, Sifu, Kerry Ogawa Wong. We did these two DVDs, one for Tai Chi sitting and one for Tai Chi standing. Uh, I want to say many, many thanks to the uh, Kato, Kato group, the foundation, uh, to help us out on these DVDs. And um, it was nice of, of them to do that. And we were able to produce these two DVDs that are available now on Amazon. So uh, Tai Chi is a wonderful art. And Sifu Kerio Gawang, just a fantastic person. Uh, just a wonderful, wonderful individual. And what a talented martial artist he is. And uh, she uh, was kind enough to do these, these two DVDs for, for us. So that's very nice of her. So that's uh, Tai Chi is a great one to put on Patreon or, or uh, online classes. So Tai Chi is very popular out there. Okay, uh, someone has a question here. Uh, big support. Amit Sensei Amit. Oh, George from Thailand. George, thank you for watching all the way from Thailand. How cool is that? Uh, Muay Thai, as you know, is the, the, the major sport, uh, official sport of Thailand. What a fantastic art form. Uh, Muay Thai, love Muay Thai. And uh, thank you, George, for watching Watching from all the way over there. Uh, Sensei Amit says, I'm a big supporter of finding historical and lesser-known arts and learning as much as possible to keep it alive. 
You know, that's that's the thing. There are many, many, many different art forms out there. And uh, especially having the museum, it gives us an opportunity to open doors uh, for people to learn about different stuff. The magazines were our lifeblood. The magazines helped us learn about different martial arts all over the world. And I want to say many, many thanks to especially Inside Kung Fu, Curtis Wong. Inside Kung Fu has been so generous to me all those years. Thank you to Black Belt for having the magazine out there. It's very kind to them uh, for having the history of the martial arts in different ways, Karate Illustrated and all that. But many, many thank yous to Curtis Wong and Inside Kung Fu Magazine. They have continued to be a big help to me all these years. They gave me my first break as a writer, and I'm very, very thankful to uh, to Insight Kung Fu. And also thank you to John Corcoran. Uh, Leslie Corcoran just contacted me just, to, just before I did this broadcast, John Corcoran's wife, about having a few things for John in the museum we wanted to collect uh, from her, and we're going to pick those up in a few weeks. And uh, it'll be nice to have that on display later on. But, uh, yeah, many, many kudos to Inside Kung Fu Magazine for being there for, for me and helping me out all those years. So they were just wonderful, wonderful. And uh, let's see, another question here. Uh, Richard Bass says, more on the adventures of Ichi and his friends and animation cartoons. Yes, uh, Richard, that's uh, excellent. Richard brings up animation. I, uh, I'm a lover of animation as an artist myself. I, I, I'm not a great artist. I'm not a great artist. I'm okay. I'm okay. But uh, I just love animation and I love cartoons and I love that whole anime history. And uh, we, we, play, we have a section here in the museum on anime. We do. And uh, we are going to have a bigger section when we get things go forward and we can move to the new place. When that, when that happens, we have a plan to have a huge area on animation and all that. So I'm a big fan of animation. As a matter of fact, one of the artists who created Hong Kong Fui, I forgive me, I forget his name at the moment. Uh, I think it's, I don't remember at the moment. I will mess it up. But he's going to come here, uh, coming up, and we're going to do a nice biography on the invention of Hong Kong Fui, uh, Scatman Crothers did the voice. And uh, that's going to be pretty exciting. So to have the, the original artist of Hong Kong Fui here, and that's going to be pretty exciting. We're going to do a little biography on him, and uh, maybe he'll do a few drawings for us. And that would be pretty good. He's pretty old, but uh, he's still a pretty good drawer, so a uh, pretty good artist. So uh, we're going to see a pretty good uh, video on that. So that's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, that's be coming up. That'll be coming up. So I just talked to them yesterday. Uh, Robert De Los Santos, the third, right? What is this? Right. One, two, three, four. It looks like four. I can't tell. Three. The third. Can you get some info for us on catch wrestling, please? There's not much out there. You know, uh, I don't know that much about the wrestling era myself. I, right now, <laughs> focusing on the martial arts mainly. Later on, uh, and we plan to do this. We plan to have wrestling in the museum, okay, and boxing in the museum when space can provide, you know. So we're because you know the, the kickboxers all learn boxing and uh, wrestling. You know, Gene LaBelle and many people are wrestlers, and that was all part of martial arts grappling, you know, especially today in the UFC and MMA and all that. So, I want to kind of include uh, wrestling and boxing later on, later on into, uh, into the martial arts history museum. But we're gonna have to do a ton of research in that area because uh, that area I'm not that familiar with. You know, doing the martial arts for 53 years. I'm familiar with the martial arts area very well. I know the area well, especially Kung Fu and kickboxing. That's my my area, but uh, I know the area, karate and all that, and where it started very well. But uh, I'm going to need some guidance in the wrestling area later on. So um, it'll be a, it'll be a lot to look into. But, uh, yeah, we'll be doing stuff on wrestling and, uh, you know, all that stuff. We even have uh, the outfit of um, a Pentagon Junior. We have one of those. That's from the Luche underground the lucha underground the uh, mexican wrestling and uh, we have uh, one of the outfits here uh years ago years ago when i was small uh, mexican wrestling was huge especially on tv it was huge and i would love to have i forget the name of the big guy he wore like a silver mask i forget his name uh, the uh, lucha guy but uh, it was a big show on then everybody watching when you were a kid they'd love to have one of those uniforms here 
So that'll be pretty exciting. That'll be pretty exciting. So we plan to expand it to different areas like that. Okay, let's see uh, another question here. Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Label. is a great place to start with. Yes, uh, again, I don't know everybody in the wrestling field, but we will. We will. You know, I, I don't claim to know everything. And we bring in the experts to help us out. And, uh, you know, we do our best. We do our best. You know, when John Corcoran was here, he helped us out galore. Many, many thanks to John Corcoran for always being here to support the museum. He was the guy, the guy. If I have to say there is one greatest historian of the martial arts, it would be John Corcoran. He is the man, uh, the resource for everything. He was just a great pioneer. I can't say enough about him. Uh, it just it became a great friend of mine. And he just was the man with the resources galore. And uh, so I, I miss him dearly, miss him dearly. Okay, uh, let's see, anybody have any more questions uh, for me? Uh, anything else exciting going on in your area? Uh, Kempo Joe, the silver mask luchador, was Al Santo. Thank you, Joe. Joe Rabello, the guy. Thank you, Joe. I want to say thank you to Joe Rabello so much. This guy knows so much information, and we are so thankful to hook up some, with great people that know so much information about the different areas of the martial arts. Uh, you know, Kempo is uh, Kempo Joe knows the whole area of martial arts, and it's just a valuable resource. Sifu Douglas Wong just knows the history of Kung Fu like you wouldn't believe uh, since it, uh, Sifu Carl Totten, just a man is immersed in history of Kung Fu and just many, many people coming on board to help the museum. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, getting our information together. And that's fantastic. So thank you, sir. Al Santo. Yep, I remember that. I remember that. Uh, Roberto says, thank you. I do like that channel and I will look for the book now. Thank you again. So very cool. Yeah, that was a great guy. I used to watch him all the time. He had his mask on all the time. Great, great show. A lot of fun. I love the new uh, Jack Black movie. That's pretty fun. The Nacho Libre, I think it's called. Pretty fun to watch. Anyway, uh, so let's see what other questions. Uh, Joe, Joe is a fountain of information. There you go. Talking about you, Joe Rabello. Thank you, Joe Rabello. Thank you very much for always helping out. Really appreciate that. Uh, let's see. I talked with Donnie Williams, as you know, the other day. That was a lot of fun. I talked to uh, uh, Sensei Fumio Dimura last night. Uh, he is doing well. He is doing well. Uh, sad to say, he told me that 90% uh, of the schools in Orange County, that's where he lives, have all closed. All closed in, in Orange County. And over here in the San Fernando Valley, in the Burbank, Los Angeles area here, uh, that is true as well. 90% of the schools have closed down. You know, in Southern California, we had somewhere in the neighborhood of about 2,000 schools out here. You know, there were a lot of garage schools, a lot of schools at churches, a lot of schools in the park, a lot of schools, you know, all these different places. And um, all the commercial schools have all closed down. All of them have closed down. Uh, they still have the garage schools left. That's what I had, garage school. And uh, for many years, and, and my instructor before me and other people all had garage schools. Benny Ukitas, uh, when he was not studying with uh, Sensei Bill Ryusaki, learned from a garage school with Arnold Ukitas. So many, many people were trained in garage schools. That's just how it was. And uh, they're still out there. They're still out there, thankfully. But uh, as far as the martial arts schools in California, uh, they've just been closing up everywhere. It's kind of sad. It's kind of sad to see. I just drove down uh, Magnolia Boulevard here in Burbank, um, and uh, we saw like 10 stores were, were closed down already. So th that's kind of sad to see. But uh, yes, uh, uh, Sifu, uh, Sensei Fumio Dimura uh, told me about 90% of the schools have closed down. He's doing okay. He is still there. He is doing okay. Uh, but uh, what a wonderful man. He's got a new movie out. Uh, he had one called The Real Miyagi. And then uh, another one I called out uh, something with Miyagi, and I heard it was very good. So I'll have to watch it later on. So congratulations to you, Sensei Fumio Dimura. Wonderful man. Uh, I'm going to be having him sign his uh, – uh, oh, I remember just before COVID, I had Sensei Fumio Dimura sign magazines from me. So I'm going to look through the stack and see – 
which ones he signed and we can auction that off as well. I completely forgot about that. I started to do that and then the COVID hit, but uh, I truly remember, I completely forgot. So I'm gonna be offering two magazines for sale uh, coming up uh, probably uh, later on, if not today, uh, a little bit later on. Uh, and this week, the cover of uh, Graciela Casillas magazine, the actual magazine, the actual magazine from Fumio Gimora. I completely forgot he signed the cover. So that's gonna be pretty nice. So anyway, uh, let's see any other questions. Uh, uh, Doug Hansen says, what a great idea. Thank you. Thank you much, Doug. We're always trying to think of new stuff on here. Uh, in regard also to the book, uh, this book is, uh, let me get it right here. This is a book I wrote called uh, The Adventures of Itchy and Friends. And it is a uh, storybook. So it's not pictures. It's a story that I wrote based on the characters I designed for the museum. And that book came out about a year ago. And I'm working slowly to get the new book done, the next volume. It's going to be a series of books, but um, I'm focusing right now on the YouTube and getting this monetized and then getting the store up. And then I'll work a little bit on that book. But that's a fun book to do, The Adventures of Itchy and His Friends. I tried to uh, solicit it. Excuse me. Sorry about that. It gets dry talking for a while. There we go. I tried to solicit it to uh, a few of the companies and um, most of them have their own writers and their own staff and they don't even look at people's outside work. So I, I tried it from the highest person in that area. I want to say thank you to them. I'm not going to mention who they are, but I want to say thank you to them for their help and their guidance. But a lot of these big companies, huge companies have their own staff and they, they don't allow any work to come in so if I submitted the book and anything to them they just send it back unopened so I've tried many many resources you know different places to do that sources and uh, it was just uh, they just didn't want to see any new work and they get stuff submitted all the time one of them said they get uh, like a hundred or so submitted all the time they just flooded with books and stuff they just got to keep sending back okay uh, uh, Doug says I, I like that book too my students liked it yeah, thank you, Doug. Thank you. I appreciate it. Itchy, the Itchy book was a lot of fun to write. I really uh, had a blast writing it. Uh, these were based on fun stories, the things I had, uh, my own kind of experiences and other things in life. Uh, if you look through the book and know a little bit of martial arts history and stuff, you can see a little bit laced in there uh, through the whole book. So it's kind of cool. Um, uh, as uh, myself, uh, someone who used to draw, I used to work for Walt Disney Productions many, 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 many moons ago, and some of that still rubbed off on me. So some of that's kind of in the book, the kind of feel of Disney in there in the book. So, you know, uh, I had a, lot, a blast writing it. Uh, I am not a talented enough artist to create a uh, picture book, a picture story book, which I love to do, but uh, it takes a lot of time for me to draw something and to do that that's, that's gonna take forever so uh that's gonna be a while for this a picture book for that but uh the whole movie's pictured in my head the whole thing's pictured in my head and one day we'll make an animation of it if we ever get the funds for it that'll be pretty fun okay there's a question another question here will there be a section on sansu the chinese kickbang kung fu sansu you know we'll, everything is all dependent on space on what we get and hopefully we'll get the big place that we're looking for. And we, we're going to do a lot of different stuff. You know, uh, Jimmy H. Wu, correct, Jimmy H. Wu, uh, he did Kung Fu Sansu. Okay. And I'm not sure if that's the one you're, you're talking about. But uh, I want to say, uh, you know, Jimmy, uh, Sifu Jimmy was very, very kind to me back in the early days. Again, I, try, I remember all the people who were nice to me. Back then I owned Martial Art Magazine. I used to own the magazine. Uh, and uh, I own that. And Jimmy, uh, Sifu Jimmy, was very helpful to me, very kind to me. And I really appreciate that. So many, many kudos to uh, Sifu Jimmy H. Wu uh, for being there for me. That was very nice. You know, many people were there, very helpful to me. Over the years, Mr. Parker, uh, many, many people who helped me out. And I, I, I just, just, and I, I don't forget that. I don't forget that. And uh, I especially remember the ones who were really rude to me. I remember that as well. So I try not to mention them at all. But the ones that are really nice, I always try to mention them sometime or another. And uh, just, just to, uh, you know, 
you know, who is I? Who is I? And they were helping me out. That's pretty cool. So anyway. Okay. Any more questions? Anybody else has any questions or anything else? Okay. Very good. Well, I want to say thank you for everybody for tuning in. That's very kind of you. I appreciate you all tuning in. I do my best to answer any questions I can about anything. I try to do my research and, uh, Robert says he lost his connection. No, oh, sorry about that, Robert. Uh, a lot of people, you, a lot of you stayed watching this. Thank you so much. We actually hit one hour of time, and that's fantastic to watch this. All these people, it's all going to add up. All this time of all of you watching is all going to add up. So thank you very much for watching. That's very kind of you. This is all helping us. We are only 600 and something uh, viewing hours away from getting us monetized, at least submitted for monetization. And thank you guys for making it happen. Thank you for watching here on YouTube. This is making a huge difference. We're probably getting like 10 or maybe we're probably getting about 20 hours from this broadcast alone. That's, that's going to be pretty good. So thank you very much. Robert says 140 hours right there. There you go. There you go. Thank you so much. Troy says, Kung Fu Sansu, right. Kung Fu Sansu, right. Uh, Jimmy H. Wu, Super Jimmy. A great guy, great guy. It's, you know, that as I close, uh, again, uh, Thomas says, thank you. Uh, uh, Sifu Douglas, uh, you can relate to me, with me on this. Uh, we are just uh, always honored to have uh, grown up uh, in this era uh, to know people uh, like Cher Lu personally, you know, and. Um, uh, many people uh, over the years, you know, um, uh, Al Novak and Brendan Lai and uh, many, many people that um, we grew up with. We literally grew up with these guys and uh, to know them all these years and to hang out with them and, you know, the dinners we used to go to and the fun stuff we used to have and uh, the great, great memories and uh I just really enjoy doing the martial arts and doing, enjoy doing the museum. I just really enjoy doing it. And I, I know it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but um, I really love, have a wonderful passion. Uh, it's, it's a great childhood to grow up in. My greatest years were with uh, Sifu Vernon Rayetta and uh, Buxom Kong and Laya Fujioka with Hungar Kung Fu. They were the greatest kung fu years of my life and i truly enjoyed those years uh, that was my greatest time in martial arts was with them and i really enjoyed that uh, just great friendships along the way and uh thank you guys for being a huge part of my life uh you made a, such a huge impact on me all of you uh i cannot express my thanks and a thank you to all of you who are watching right now and uh helping us here on youtube um, you can say, you can say years from now, I was there. I was, I helped build the museum by building the YouTube channel. I helped build the museum. You can honestly say that without reservation. You guys were there. You guys are becoming right now the pioneers of the museum to help us through YouTube because that's going to help us a lot, build the museum. And you say, look, I played a role. Yes, you did. All of you have played a huge role in building this museum by helping us right now on YouTube. So I just want to say thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Always, you know that, guys. Always, everybody, for helping us out. And uh, and uh, you, you guys are the one that made it. You guys are the one that made this possible. So many, many thanks to everybody. Uh, Robert says thank you. I love you all. Love you all, too. Uh, what have uh, Doug says he's going to have his students watch on YouTube. Thank you so much. Uh, wonderful comments. Thank you, everybody. Very kind of you. Very kind of you. Okay, take care, everybody. Have a fantastic Chinese New Year's today. Eat some orange chicken. Again, the best ever orange chicken is from Panda Express. There you go. <laughs> Have a wonderful time. Sifu Douglas Wong, thank you for coming on board and answering a few questions for people. Joe Robello, everybody, everybody. You name it, Robert, uh, Doug, you know, uh, all you guys, you know, everybody's watching. I can't name everybody, but you know what I mean. Everybody who's watching, I want to say thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, it, it means a lot. It means a lot. And again, thank you for mentioning that, Robert. Stay safe. Stay, stay safe out there. Stay safe. Guys, take care. Okay.
Bye.